Are humans naturally greedy, naturally evil, naturally discontent, naturally depressed, naturally anxious? I would say no, but many of the top thinkers today think that we are genetically just naturally um, broken as far as all of these negative traits. Um, of course, you understand why they think this because everywhere you look people are anxious and depressed and there's all kinds of evil things going on in the world but I would argue and I think there's good evidence when you look at the right places that humans are not naturally these things but in fact we are naturally social we are naturally content we are naturally happy when given the proper environment when we are being raised and as adults which includes diet and lifestyle but um, my pieces of evidence for this are number one there's no archaeological evidence of human on human violence prior to farming so for hundred thousand years we were fully human we were in equatorial Africa and there's no evidence of human on human violence prior to that we were pre-human but we were bipedal and we were in Africa for two and a half million years and there's also no evidence for um, our ancestors being violent to each other. Um, next there's a woman called Jean Liedloff who spent three years in the Amazon with a tribe, I forget their name, in the 50s I believe and she recorded um, the ins and outs of, of the uh, traits of this tribe and it didn't hit her until later when she came back and she realized wow these people were especially content they weren't depressed they weren't anxious they didn't have um, greed or um, evil they didn't they weren't malevolent malevolent with each other um, they actually um, were never coercive they didn't try to um, get their way with other people they were um, essentially what we would wish that society could be so if there's one group of people who are naturally content and naturally the opposite of evil but highly social and altruistic then you can't say that humans are naturally evil and um, coercive because if there's one group how could you say it's natural now maybe you could say that well there's something that's creating them to be that way or maybe they're genetically different but essentially they're not they're purely human just like we are um, so there must be something causing us to be that way there's tons of evidence of violence and war since for farming so the logical conclusion is that for all of our evolutionary history when we became human and prior to just prior to that we weren't violent with each other as soon as farming started for whatever reason we started to become violent um, something happened we don't know what happened I have some ideas but it's beyond the scope of this video um, but she noticed that the the children would never whine they would never fight they would never cry unless they were injured um, and they were cooperative, naturally curious, they were naturally constantly learning, and as adults they were naturally industrious, they worked hard, they, but they enjoyed working. They didn't really have leisure because their work was their leisure. They were naturally content and it was fun for them to work. Um, anyway so um, so what's going on here and she said that um, there were a few things that she noticed and what I see is that um, the reason they were content is that they had fully developed human brains and that modern Western societies have underdeveloped brains certain parts of their brains are underdeveloped and in that way dysfunctional in a way an illness so that the reason I would call the the um, 
the fact that in the West we're discontent and anxious and depressed and all these other negative attributes because we um, have an illness, an illness of improper maturation of our brain during development. Um, but she noticed that the children, the infants were always held and carried around and being constantly jostled as people were um, going about their lives and doing the work that they were doing, the infants were being carried along whether they were sleeping or whether they were nursing or whether they were watching. And so this physical jostling has something to do with the proper development of our brain and when we're isolated in a crib, when we're isolated in a baby room and we're not sleeping with other humans, um, when we're isolated in a playpen, then our brain isn't going to develop the same. Um, infants were never denied their their wants. In other words, they the infants were not crying except for a split second until the mother put it up to the breast and they got some more nursing and breastfeeding. And so it was like the, the infants up to maybe crawling age were in bliss. It was like the second womb where um, all of their desires were met and the brain was able to de continue developing in a womb-like environment until the baby gets so sick of it that of having everything they want within um, the safety of its mother's arms that on its own it wants to get down and start crawling and go on outside and playing with the other children and the parents then would would let it do that but when the parent forces the kid to not be safe in its arms, to sleep in a separate room, to cry itself to sleep, for whatever reasons, they're probably good reasons as far as intentions, but the infant is, um, for various reasons, not gonna develop the same as if it's being held constantly um, for the first several months of life. Plus, on top of that, all of the people in the tribe had well-developed brains and fully developed human brains and so as the child's growing up it has perfect and great examples of how to be a human and so that um, it's it's in it's, I, I wouldn't say socialized into it because when you look at um, the reality of what's happening is these kids are naturally social because part of it is that the parents were never found to be telling the kids what to do or teaching the kids or giving them rules. They would end up naturally getting along. The parents never told the kids, when you're playing with the bows and arrows, be very careful and only do it over here and watch what you're doing and all of these types of rules because the parents expected their kids to instinctually know what to do to know the right thing. And the kids were so socially inclined that they did exactly what their parents expected. Now look at what happens in the West where the parents are so frightened that the kid's going to accidentally hurt itself or hurt someone else that that fear comes through to the child and the child picks up on that. And because the child's so incredibly social, the child wants to make the parent happy by fulfilling the parent's expectations which is that I'm a clumsy idiot and I'm gonna accidentally shoot someone with my bow and arrow on accident because that's my nature because my mom tells me what my nature is by what she expects um, um, so th to go into the more uh, the deeper biology of it um, the reptile brain the mammal brain and the human brain we have three layers of brain um, basically through evolution and as we got more functions we didn't get rid of the old function we just grew new functions in the brain on top of the old function why reinvent the wheel so for example a reptile's primitive brain is really good at surviving um, so if a mammal decides to de <laughs> it doesn't decide but when a mammal develops the mammal brain, which is different than the reptile brain in that it is social, it cares for its young, it's not going to develop a mammal survival brain, it's just going to use the reptile brain of its ancestors. And so 
Reptiles like to be solitary for the most part, and they don't care for their children for the most part. They'll eat their children in many cases and not think twice. But a mammal won't do that unless it's starving or severely injured or sick, right? So the mammal brain developed um, something called the amygdala that you could say is the fear center, but it's part of it's like a fail-safe so that if the new mechanism of being social and nice to your children um, isn't cutting it, isn't getting the job done, and there's some huge survival emergency, the amygdala kicks in, actually turns down the altruistic part of the mammal brain, and turns up the reptile brain for survival. Um, so in that regard, um, you could kind of see where I'm going with this, that now we have a human brain and it's basically like a computer. So humans are social and care for their children just like all mammals are, but we also have a calculating part of our brain. Um, but um, So I would, I would contend that any mammal that was um, raised so differently from what a hundred thousand years of its ancestors raised it as, like humans started to do after farming, whatever that looked like, um, I would contend that that mammal would not survive because um, its reptile brain would have been in control the whole time because the amygdala would have been firing off all the time saying, there's something wrong, there's something wrong, my parents aren't raising me the way that my genes are expecting. And so the survival part of the brain, the reptile brain, would come out and it would take charge. And in that case, the mammal wouldn't be able to raise future children properly and the mammal would go extinct. But in the case of a human, and likely that's the way that some mammals that are extinct went extinct, is there was some change in the environment that was so stressful that the mammal part of their brain got turned off, the reptile brain took back over, but it wasn't capable of being a mammal, and so then the mammal went extinct. But with humans, we were able to survive, and survive really well, and maybe even, it could be argued, survive better in some ways, because when we turned off our portions of our mammal brain, the altruistic part of our brain, the bonding, the relationship, the raise, instinctually raising our kids, part of our brain and the reptile brain took over we also had this computer brain that was pretty darn smart and was able to be utilized by the survival reptile brain so if you think about it um, at least in severe cases maybe in schizophrenic cases or um, other severely mentally ill cases um, humans that are not developed properly are like an alligator with a computer at its disposal to plan and to um, survive. So that's kind of a scary thought, but that's basically what modern humans are when we're at our worst. And that's how all the wars happen and all of the mass murders happen, these school shootings, it's that a human is walking around with its reptile brain telling it what to do with the planning computer part of the brain um, at its service. So I would contend that Jordan Peterson is correct on 99.9% .9 of everything he talks about that I've, at least of those things that I've listened to him on the internet, and except for this one thing that I, as far as I can tell, he believes that um, humans are naturally um, evil, that we naturally are run by our reptile brain. He would call it the monster or the dragon within. And I would say, no, that is a dysfunction, that is an illness with a very specific cause, which is um, we've, we've lost our mammal ability to raise our kids properly. If you think about it, mammals um, 
all mammals have instincts to raise their children perfectly. And they don't have a thinking brain, so they don't think about it. They just instinctually do it, and they do it right every time, in the wild at least, maybe not in zoos where humans have, have messed things up. But why is it that humans don't instinctually, we're mammals, why don't we instinctually know how, without a shadow of a doubt, know how to take care of our kids? Why, do, why are there all these parenting books of other people telling us with their thinking brain how we should raise our kids and why are we sh so uncertain? Well, it's because our mammal brain never fully developed and we're being run in some degree that's unnatural by our reptile brain that has full use of our human computer thinking brain. And so we have this sense that we're f totally fine and normal and this is just the way it's always been because our parents were this way and our grandparents were this way and their parents were this way. But I would contend that what Jordan Peter's talking about with the Bible is that um, it, the Bible is actually a description of the human condition since we left Africa, since we started farming. It doesn't I don't think accurately tell us why we're this way, but it does very, um, it's, I wouldn't say accurately, but very usefully tells us with story and metaphor um, how we are right now in the midst of this illness, in the midst of this dysfunction. And so to, to end this, um, video here to round this off, um, I want to talk a little bit about the consequences of getting this wrong. So if you believe that humans are genetically or naturally evil or naturally depressed and anxious and naturally discontent, rather than what I'm trying to say, which is, no, we're the opposite of that. It's just that we're sick because we didn't, our brain didn't develop correctly because of having parents who have, whose brains weren't developed fully, because at some point we lost our mammal instinct because of some kind of trauma, emotional trauma, and we coincidentally were able to survive because of our thinking brain that had already evolved prior to this. And so we're being run pathologically by our survival reptile brain in cahoots with our thinking brain. Um, but if you think that this is normal, this is just how humans are, and that genetically we're this way no matter what you do, then the, the end conclusion of that is that, well, we need medicine to save us from this fate. We need technology to save us, right? So if we're genetically bad, then the ultimate goal of society should be to cure us of ourselves, right? We're naturally bad. We naturally just kill people for no good reason because we're kind of crazy. So we need medicine to cure us of this craziness. And if it's genetic, then it's going to look something like GMO kids or GMO people or vaccines that change your genetics to not to but basically take the free will that at least we're in the illusion of having away from us by forcing us to genetically not have the choice to kill people. And on the one hand, you might think, well, that sounds like a good idea is let's let the technology of medicine um, cure us of our ability to do anything wrong. But who gets to decide what's right and wrong and who gets to decide what technology should we go after? Because there's a lot of different ways you could go about it. And really the end solution some people could come up with is, well, we just need to create computers and computers could be sentient if they're smart enough and then they wouldn't have all the pitfalls of human emotion and so we would just have computers as our offspring and eventually humans will just die out and computers will be our descendants. Fine, I mean, whatever. I'm not going to be around, neither are you at that point, but I would contend that 
we can fix this naturally. We can fix this in a way that's sane and also that it's not going to work. The, the medical cure for this supposed natural evilness that humans just are born with isn't going to work because it's not true. You have to know the truth in order to fix the problem. You have to know the cause of the problem or you're not going to be able to fix it. Um, it it's kind of hard to wrap my mind around it. It's hard to explain it, but it's like if you have a thorn in your foot but you don't know that it's the pains caused by a thorn and you think you're just born that way, then if you try to take drugs or vaccines or genetically modify yourself or genetically modify your children so that they won't have this pain in their foot, I mean, how ridiculous when you could just pull the thorn out. And that's um, why this is so important. And I know that religions and it seems like Jordan Peterson and maybe Stefan Molyneux, um, some of these really amazing thinkers, uh, maybe even Sam Harris, have a large emotional investment, I would say, in the idea that humans are naturally evil and that, that that's just how we are, that I think it's going to be difficult for them to come around to the evidence, to really admitting to what the evidence adds up to, that we are not naturally evil and bad, that we ha are in a disease of um, poor development, and that we can actually fix it in a sane, natural way if we put all put our heads to it. But if we're all putting our heads towards, well, we just have to overcome this handicap of being born bad, um, it's never going to work. Uh, so that's all for now. And my next video hopefully will be about um, the steps you can take to correct. Well, I guess we... we maybe need to assess within ourselves how much of this dysfunction we have because it certainly is a, 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 um, a spectrum, let's call it, or a gray, a gray scale depending on how, much, how bad your childhood was or how good it was. But certainly we, in the West at least, we're all affected to some degree by it. And so then I'm going to give um, the um, steps, let's say, to take to correct it. All right, see you then.